फर्स्ट वी टॉक अबाउट इंटीग्रेटेड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ चाइल्डहुड इलनेस आई एम सी आई नोट दैट देर इज नो एन वॉट इज आई एम सी आई द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉजेज ऑफ इन्फेंट एंड चाइल्ड मोटेलिटी इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज आर एक्यूट रेस्परेटरी इन्फेक्शन लाइक निमोनिया डायरिया मलेरिया मीजल्स एंड मेल न्यूट्रिशन सो मेकिंग अ सिंगल डायग्नोसिस मे नॉट बी फिजिबल वेन द चाइल्ड प्रेजेंट्स टू द हेल्थ सेंटर एंड मे नॉट बी अप्रोप्रिएट ऑल्सो बिकॉज मैनी चिल्ड्रेन प्रेजेंट विद ओवरलैपिंग साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ डिजीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ चाइल्ड हु इज मेल नरिश्ड मे हैव निमोनिया मे हैव पेरेंटल डायरिया सो देर इज इट इज नॉट अप्रोप्रिएट टू मेक अ सिंगल डायग्नोसिस इंस्टेड इट इज बेटर टू पुट हिम इन अ कैटेगरी बिकॉज द क्लिनिकल आउटकम डिपेंड्स अपॉन ट्रीटिंग नॉट ओनली द इमीडिएट प्रेजेंटिंग सिम्टम बट ऑल्सो द अंडरलाइंग डिसऑर्डर्स एंड दिस इज स्पेशली ट्रू ऑफ द फर्स्ट लेवल हेल्थ फेसिलिटीज वेर एग्जामिनेशन इन्वॉल्व वेरी फ्यू इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स और नो इंस्ट्रूमेंट देर नो लैब टेस्ट एंड नो एक्सरे every day parents seek health care for sick children and then they take them to peripheral health centers which may have only health workers pharmacists doctors some hospitals and sometimes traditional healers and various surveys reveal that many sick children are actually not properly assessed by these health care providers and are not properly treated and even if they are the parents are not properly advised so the child will go back and fall ill again and will present again with a severe disease at first level health facilities in the low income countries the diagnostic facilities like x rays lab services are almost non existent so are the drugs so these factors make providing quality care to sick children a serious challenge to respond to this challenge who and unicef developed a strategy known as integrated management of childhood illness imci now i am nci that is the indian version of imci is named as i am nci that is integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness so the strategy of imci has been adopted in india as imnci because neonatal mortality contributes to over 64% of the infant mortality and most of the neonatal mortality it occurs in the first week of life the management of first week of life if a child presents in the first week of life was not included initial in the initial imci also the mortality rate in the second month of life is also higher than at the later ages of infancy and the training of 7 uh, days to 2 months of age was given lesser amount of time in imci compared to the time given for management of the age group 2 months to 5 years so any health program that aims to reduce infant mortality rate in india it needs to address mortality in the first two months of life particularly in the first seven days of life so the imnci guide clinical guidelines in india they target all the children below 5 years of age 0 to 5 years old this is the age group that bears the maximum childhood disease burden how is imnci different from imci in indian adaptation first 0 to 7 days of age assessment and management is also included in the training second the training of health personnel begins with the younger child first that is from 0 to 2 months whereas in imci this was an after the training for the older child management the 0 to 2 months of child is known as sick young infant and 2 month to 5 years is known as sick child the proportion of training time devoted to sick young infant and the sick child 
is almost equal in the Indian version of IMCI. So the training is done for almost equal amount of time for both the management of the young infant and sick child. And the training is the IMCI is skill based, more skill based. The IMCI guidelines incorporate the national guidelines on the management of malaria, anemia, vitamin E supplementation and immunization schedule. The basis of IMNCI guidelines regarding assessment and management of the sick child 0 to 5 years of age is that there is a definite approach to case management, stepwise approach to case management which is evidence based and syndromic. What does these things mean? The evidence based syndromic approach supports the rational, effective and affordable use of various drugs and the diagnostic tools. What is evidence based medicine? It is, it uses the evidence from clinical research and hence limits the use of intuition and systematic clinical experience in medical decision making by the health workers. So in situations where lab support and clinical resources are limited, the synomic approach is more realistic and cost effective way to manage the children. This includes careful and systematic assessment of the common symptoms and some selected clinical signs which are sufficient to provide information to guide rational and effective management action. How to deal with this child? So the guidelines are based on evidence based syndromic approach and are used by the health worker to determine the health problem or health problems the child may be having to determine the severity of the child's condition, whatever is the health problem and actions that can be taken to care for the child depending upon the severity of the condition. The action may include referring the child immediately or manage within the available resources at the center or the child can be managed at home, so sent home with instructions. The integrated case management process is presented on a series of charts which show the sequence of steps and how to perform them. These charts describe the following steps. First, how to assess the young infant or sick child which means taking history and doing a physical examination. After assessment, classify the illness. Classify means taking a decision on the severity of the illness and after that assigning to a color classification which corresponds to the severity of the disease. Classification of the child's condition is not specific diagnosis. Instead, they are color coded categories that are used to determine the treatment for that category. After classifying and assigning the illness to one of the severity categories, identify the treatment for that category. The charts recommend the appropriate treatment for each color coded classification. Then accordingly treat the child. Treatment may mean treating within the clinic, prescribing drugs and other treatments which can be given to the mother to be given at home and also teaching the mother how to carry out these treatments and it may also mean referring the child. Then counseling the mother after giving the treatment, counseling the mother regarding the feeding deficiency if there assessed to be any and telling her about proper appropriate food and fluids that can be given to the child and explaining her the danger signs when the child has to be brought back to the clinic immediately or for follow up and giving follow up care when the child comes back for follow up. The integrated case management process can be depicted as below. The first step is to check for danger signs as soon as the child presents which include the four of these and the child has to be referred if any one of these are present. Then assess the main symptom with which the child has presented. Take a detailed history and then after assessing the main symptom assess the nutrition status of the child 
assess the immunization status of the child and any deficiency in the feeding pattern of the child. Any other problems that you can see, check for those. And depending on the above information, classify the condition of the child and assign to one of the three color codes and identify the treatment action as per the actions listed in the color band. If the child falls in the pink category, it means it requires urgent referral with any pre-referral treatment which may be mentioned on the chart with advising the parents how what will they do on their way. At the referral facility, the child is assessed, is given emergency treatment, then diagnosis, specific diagnosis and treatment and follow up. If the child falls in the yellow category, that means the treatment has to be given in the OPD itself. The treatment may include treating the local infection, giving oral drugs at the OPD, at the center itself, and then advising and teaching the mother, showing her how the drugs are given and teaching her that what she's supposed to do when she goes home, call her for follow-up and give follow-up after two days. If the child falls in the green band, it means the child can be managed at home, but the child, child's caretaker, which is mostly the mother, has to be counseled. That is very important. As to how to give the oral drugs that have been prescribed, it is better that she gives the first dose there itself so that the health worker can see if she is giving it properly. To tell her how to treat the local infections at home, counsel her into that she has to continue feeding and what feed has to be given, explain her the danger signs so that she can rush back to the health center if any of those develop and to tell her when to come for follow up. All the steps that we discussed in the previous section are mentioned on IMNCI wall charts. The case management process is presented on two different sets of charts. One set or both the sets have to be displayed prominently on the wall of the OPD. The first set is the management of young infants that is 0 to 2 months of age and is presented on two, on two charts. They are titled, the first chart says assess and classify the sick young infant and the second part chart says what, how to treat the young infant and counsel the mother. The case management process for 2 months to 5 years of age is somewhat different and represented on a different set of chart which has three charts set. First chart says how to assess and classify the child. Second gives the treatment for the particular category. And third chart tells how to counsel the mother because an older child requires more management at home by the mother. So more counseling is required. So the third chart. These charts are designed so that you can help manage young infants, any health worker including you can manage young infants and children correctly and efficiently. So these charts are to be stuck onto the wall of the OPD where it can be prominently seen. An example of one of the IMNCI chart. You can see that the two sets are stuck on the wall in an OPD. The three components of IMNCI strategy, there are three components of IMNCI strategy. One is improvement in the case management skills of the health worker through the guidelines on integrated management that we have discussed. Second component is improvement in the overall health system that is the PHCs, CHCs, the first referral units have to be strengthened. There has to be more better infrastructure, better facilities, better diagnostic facilities, more better drugs and specialists should be posted over there, better manpower. So this in addition simultaneously with improving the skill by training, improvement in the infrastructure of the health system are also a part of IMNCI. The third component is improvement in family and community healthcare practices. 
and involving them in healthcare process. So also training the community in how to take better care of the children so that their nutrition status and health remain positive and involving them in healthcare process if the child falls sick. But it is mostly the improvement in the case management skills by continuing the trainings of the health workers which is given more stress under MNCI and hence it is more skill based. Now in addition to the initially only the skill based guidelines for the health worker were developed. Now in addition two more guidelines for different level workers have been developed. One is pre-clinical pre-service IMNCI that is IMNCI training which is included in the curriculum of undergraduate students in medical colleges, MBBS students or uh, alternative system of medicines or even nursing professionals and this will help in providing trained IMNCI manpower in both the public and the private sector. They may decide to work in the public or private sector but they would have the necessary skills for managing sick young children and uh, sick child as per the IMNCI guidelines. Second set of guidelines is facility based IMNCI or IF IMNCI. Now once the child is referred by the health worker to a higher facility, if the staff present at this higher facility also just follows the IMNCI guidelines, then the management doesn't change. So facility based IMNCI for higher management of sick children includes uh, training for doctors and staff nurses present at the health worker. So F IMNCI training would provide optimal skills required by the medical officers and staff nurses present at the first referral units for better management of higher complications. And this also helps to address the acute shortage of pediatricians at these facilities. F IMNCI focuses on providing appropriate management of the major causes of neonatal and childhood mortality like asphyxia, sepsis, low birth weight, pneumonia, diarrhea, etc. The master trainers for FIMNCI are pediatricians from tertiary hospitals and medical colleges.